So we got the bed cut on this truck and sectioned, and now it's a short bed. And now, the funny thing is, it looks like a short bed. It, uh, it rides high in the back, so it's like it's running downhill all the time. There's a big, giant fender gap here, and <clears throat> you can look down the side of the rest of the truck and see that it looks like it's a typical short bed truck. Riding low in the front and riding high in the back, and this doesn't look real performance oriented. Um, so I figured while I was here with the bed off, it would be the perfect time to lower this thing. Um, so I'm trying to make a science experiment out of it. Um, the drive shaft has to get shortened anyway, and so people say that when you one with the truck, you end up running into driveline issues because your drive shaft gets too long for the vehicle, so it starts to smash the drive shaft up into the transmission. Um, so I thought we'd go ahead and measure that, check the pinion angle. People complain and say, well, if you lower it, you ruin your pinion angle. So I thought, eh, why not do a science experiment here? And we'll check exactly how much we lower the thing. We'll try to make it as scientific as possible. We'll Put a angle meter on the engine and the rear diff and see what the drive line looks like in the current configuration and then put this lowering kit on and then see if it changes it a whole bunch. Alright, so here goes our science project. So we're going to pick a spot on the wheel well. We're measuring to the same place. I'm going to pick a spot in the floor. We're measuring the same place in the floor. We'll go crazy. We'll mark the tire. Instead of tire was right here. So put the truck back in the almost exact same spot. Alright, so the tire goes here. Tire, tire. Alright. And then we'll pick a nice round number on the measuring tape and say as long as we're here. And I well, didn't work out pretty good. Alright, so this here says this line here. We're at 33 inches right here. There's 33 off the ground. And we'll put our tape X here. So now if there's any sort of variations in the concrete or anything being uneven or you say, well, the truck's on a slope or something, we'll put it back in the same spot in the shop and lowering kit on and see how much lower this thing sits. Uh, the kit claims it'll do four to six inches, so two, three, 29, like if it brought the top of the wheel well down to here, that would essentially cover, that would tuck this, start to tuck the wheel up into the wheel well. I wonder if that's going to be too much and cause the truck to start to sit nose high. Um, I guess if it does, we'll have to cut the front springs to drop it back down a little bit. Alright, we put some tape on the ground. This mark I made with the pink marker didn't show up. Uh, so we'll kind of walk through this again. So, get the bed pulled off of there and I'll show you guys this kit. So I'm going to use this kit I got through from DJM. I bought it through Summit. It's about $180. Uh, it's a pretty basic, pretty straightforward kit. Uh, it comes with two brackets. These are pretty solid brackets and they're made of some thick steel. You compare them to how thick your finger is and it's like, man, either I've got girly fingers or that's some, some steer, serious steel there. It looks like those are a good quality made piece. 
one of those for each side. It's a hardware kit and there's a shackle for each side. Uh, the shackles are side specific, the directions say. Uh, I'm not sure how hard those will be to put on. Uh, for $10, I got a UMI angle meter, angle finder gauge with a magnetic base so we can stick it on the uh, stick it on the rear end, we can stick it on the harmonic balancer and see what our driveline angles look like and we'll take a comparison before and after we put the kit on and see if it changes it drastically or not. Uh, I bought these six degree pinion angle shims to go underneath the springs. I'm not sure that six degrees is going to be, I think six degrees might be too much. Um, Maybe it won't. I don't know. These were super cheap. They were like five or six dollars a piece. So I just bought two as a gamble. Uh, if I don't use them, oh well, six dollars. I'll find something else to do with it. And that's it. There's like a simple uh, one sheet instruction page. Basically says cut the rivets off the old brackets, put these in place, leave things loose, and uh, good luck finding some shocks. It says. All right, so here's the method I'm going to use for this. I'm going to, whoops, align this yoke so that it's flat across here. So I want to kind of just set this gauge. It doesn't stand on very low at all. So there's zero. So now, in theory, if we put this gauge on here and let it even out. Okay, so it settles back down around 84, 85 degrees in that pinion angle there. Um, so now it'll be interesting to see what the tail shaft is coming out of the transmission. So I'll slide it underneath there. Let's see if we can't take a look at that one. Okay, so we're just laying underneath the truck. And what I did is set the pinion yoke here straight up and down. So that I think I have the most uh, accurate reference possible when we try to measure this angle here. So now what we're going to do is put that uh, angle finder straight up and down on the side like we did before. So we're right at the 84, 85 degree mark again. Sorry that's kind of out of focus and chaotic there. Um, Okay, so I guess Ford did their homework and actually matched those two driveline angles even back in 1969. Kind of interesting. Some of the stuff that I read on the internet, I'm always kind of skeptical as to whether or not it's true and whether or not uh, it'll make a, make a difference or not. In this case, there seems to be a lot of merit to all the, uh, the chatter, so we'll go ahead and try to keep that rear pinion angle as close to factory as possible. Okay, so what I've done here is set the frame on jack stands, so the back axle is hanging uh, not completely in the air, but it doesn't have much pressure on it. The jack underneath there is putting the pressure on the bottom side of the pumpkin on the diff. I'm going to just pull this front spring hanger out of here. These are some big 7 8 bolts, and we'll, uh, we'll see. So what this kit does is it takes this front hanger here and replaces it with this hanger here so obviously the front of the spring will come up and be mounted higher in one of these holes um, so when it does that it looks like it's going to pivot around the back spring and it's going to come up higher this has these uh what do they call it some sort of flexomatic or something spring on it Anyway, first things first, I'll knock this bolt out of here, hopefully. Not bad shape for a 50 year old bolt in there. That came out easier than I thought it was going to. I think we might have to rename this truck the PB Blast Edition or something. Everything I've 
taken off of here. I've used the PB Blast to make it easier. Alright, so I'm just going to slice these rivets out of here. Yeah, that's loose. Okay, I did the passenger side. Uh, the rivets didn't fight nearly as hard over there. The whole side was done in like six or seven minutes. Um, so the rivets came out like I expected them to. This driver's side that you guys saw me fight with, man, that guy at the factory must have been uh, on his Wheaties that morning. That thing was that thing was swedged in there at an impressive rate. Um, so when I lower the truck, I guess we'll just go ahead and go full crazy here and go to the lowest position that we can to lower the back of this truck. Uh, I couldn't quite get the spring to pull into alignment with the, the hole here. So I just put a ratchet strap on this back axle uh, leaf spring pack bolt down there. And then I just went to the front bed hole and just pulled on it just a little bit. It just, it seemed to drop right in. So the bolt fit right in there. Oh, famous last words. It was going in by hand. A little sticky, but I think the impact will pull it up. On the other side, looks like I'm going to have to do it the exact same way. Uh, so I'll put a ratchet strap on there real quick, put a little tension on it, hold it into place. Okay, so there's the two bolts in. Um, at this point, we'll take it off the jack stands and see how bad that pinion angle looks. I got a feeling this truck's going to sit way lower than it did. I didn't have to take the tires near that far off the ground to get the jack stands under it last time. Huh. That's funny. That truck almost sits level now. It, uh... I should go find a level and put it on this truck. I know it's kind of hard to tell without a frame of reference. I'm having the bed on it with the camera, but it's like, uh, it's significantly lower on the back. It might be, it might be riding too low on the back. It almost looks like it's, uh, really far down there. So that pinion angle hasn't moved. Uh, well, I didn't touch the gauge. And we're like, oh man, we're at 70, 78, so 78 to 84 would be, was that, 6 degrees? So we're kind of where I was hoping we would be. Yeah, so I wonder if the, uh, the 6 degree pinion blocks would, uh, would fix this and make it okay. I feel like normally I tell you guys something like, oh, hey, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do this now, and I'm going to do that now, and now, <laughs> at this moment, I don't have a solid answer. There's still shock travel, so the shocks aren't... I mean, the shocks seem like they're moving, so they're not bottoming out at this, this rate. So the directions here say that the... Uh, shackle will install with the bushings down and the open side forward. 
the hole furthest away from the bushing will lower the truck more than the closer hole, which means if we put the spring in this hole versus this hole, the truck will actually get lower here. Um, so they don't show the uh, flexomatic suspension in this diagram. They just show this going straight into here, which would eliminate, this is going to the frame pocket, the piece that's, the spring perch that's riveted to the frame. This piece would go inside of there, and it would essentially put the spring right either just a tad higher or a tad lower. So this spring right now is set, well, let's say that. Yeah, it's essentially set the same exact distance of that flexomatic spring. So you could change these out. We could take this flexo thing off of here. And we get the same exact result as the lowest setting on here. Or, I guess if we decide it's too low, we push this spring back down, which I feel like may push our uh, pinion angle to a worse angle. If the spring were to rotate, the center of the axle would rotate on that front pivot at that point. If we push this end back down, it would cause the pinion angle to go up even steeper. So let's do this. I'll put the bed back on it. We'll look at it. If it looks cool, then we'll pull the bed off real quick. Or I'll just tighten the tighten the mounts down. And we'll call this thing set. Go ahead and do a little preemptive uh, PB blast in here just to make sure the, uh, we have to put these spring perches in in a second. Hopefully, we can get these bolts all loose. All right, check this thing out. It's sitting, uh, it almost appears to be nose high, but I put a level on the back of it here and it looks like this thing is actually sitting just a tad tail high, so it has a tiny bit of rake to it still. So in order to fix the, uh, to perfectly level this, we'd have to raise the front a little bit more, which would indicate that it has a tiniest bit of rake to it. So it's sitting really close to being level now. Um, same thing if I were to push down in the back, like put a a good weight in or something, we might we could probably get the back end to go level. Oh, yeah, like that. Anyway, it looks like it sits pretty, uh, pretty level and pretty, pretty pleased with the stains. It looks pretty cool. I'm kind of tempted to try that second, uh, that second position to raise it back up a little bit. And I think what we'll do is just measure our actual lower the mount here and we'll see what the delta is okay so I'm lined back up so we're at 33 to here from the floor we are now at ooh, 29 and a half so we got three one two three and a half inches out of that that's less than four inches that's kind of surprising I expected to see a little more of a drop. I guess if you had a, if you had the non auto flex flex agent, whatever that rear axle spring actuator is, I guess if you had that, your truck may sit a little bit uh, higher to begin with. So when you put those drop tackles on the rear, you'd probably get another uh, three inches of drop back there or two, whatever, whatever you picked. Um, I think I'm going to run it like this. Like, kind of want to measure that uh, that front pinion again. So just bolted on essentially three and a half inches of drop in roughly 30 minutes as long as the uh, the bed's already unbolted. Unbolting the bed and getting it removed would be a, a, a pretty good chore, especially if the bed's rusted on and stuff. 
anyway, I'm going to check that drive line angle one more time and see where we're at with that thing. Okay, so just for scientific purposes, we're back underneath this truck again. Sorry for the shaky video. I'm trying to roll around on a creeper and brought my big camera. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Uh, what did I do here? We measure, we level this out. And said pretty much straight on zero. And then we said, tell us your angle, Mr. Pinion Guy. It looks like you're sitting right at 84 here. Which is kind of interesting. I thought it might, as the frame came down, I thought perhaps this thing would also come down. Go back and watch the video. Maybe this one was 86 before. Alright, so to go ahead and try to prolong the life of these U-joints and get this uh, pinion angle back to a, a more reasonable level. This thing's sitting right at like 76, 77 degrees, so you got to get it closer to 84 because the front's at 84 now. Uh, so I'm going to take these pinion wedges here that I just got from Summit Racing. These are made by Pro Comp. It's supposed to be good for 6 degrees. And I'll take the spring U-bolts off and just put these in there so that it puts the pinion angle back down. So this goes from, this will go from 77 or so it's at now. You know, by putting these under the front of the axle below the spring, underneath the spring perch, it should push the, the front of this axle back down, getting us closer to that magic 84 number we're shooting for. So I'll quickly break these spring packs apart with a impact and slide these wedges in here. Do we have enough room? Looks like not quite enough. There's like 83 there, so I think we're going to call it close enough. Okay, so I got my answer on the drive shaft actually getting shorter. Um, it looks like it actually did get shorter. Did, uh, so when I measured it before, after I cut the bed and cut the frame down, my center to center pinion measurement was 61 and a half. It, uh, so what it does is takes a measurement from the center of this U-joint right here to the center of the rear U-joint. And with the truck sitting on the ground at regular ride height, that measurement, so just from this surface here to the rear corresponding surface on the axle was 61 and a half. So after I lowered the truck and put the uh, pinion angle shims in it to correct for the pinion angle change, I measured it again and just to give the guy the guy at the driveline shop the measurements I needed. That uh that seems to be a true statement for the for you guys that are uh looking at lowering your trucks here and uh, potentially changing that drive shaft length, you would have to factor in uh, either going to the drive shaft shop and having your drive shaft cut down and shortened, or hope that you have enough of this uh slip yoke here that are enough of these splines exposed that you could get this uh, these splines to go into this receptacle or this u-joint end here an extra three quarters of an inch anyway it appears as though all the chatter and the uh, internet forums and chat rooms and stuff seems to be pretty true uh, the drive shaft did get shorter when i lowered it and i did have to make some changes there so 
Luckily for me, I was cutting the frame at the same time, so I was going to the drive shaft shop anyway. So it worked out good to be able to lower the truck pretty quickly there, get the measurements, and then go out back to the shop. So.